Hi, welcome to Microsoft Tutorials. My name is Amir. This is the continuation of part two, installation of SSMS. In this session, we will understand how to install Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. In the previous video, we learned what are the different versions and editions of the SQL Server and their features. If you have not gone through them, please go to the video once. Based on the requirement, today we are going to install SQL Server 2012. SQL Server supports two types of installations. One is standalone, another one cluster based. So if we want to install SQL Server, we want to check out what are the prerequisite required for each and every edition of the SQL Server. Let's see. First, if you are going to install Microsoft SQL Server 2005, that what are the prerequisites that we required? First, we require setup support files, and then the second one, .NET Framework 2.0, the third one, SQL Server Native Client. These are three required why you are going to install Microsoft SQL Server 2005. If you are, if you want to install Microsoft SQL Server 2008 or 2008 R2, you require setup supporting files, .NET Framework 3.5, SP1, or and you know SQL Server native client, another one Windows installer 4.5 or the later versions. Okay, but in this session that we are going to install SQL Server 2012 for that, what are the prerequisites required? For that, you require setup support files, .NET Framework 4.2, SQL Server native client, Windows installer 4.5 or the later version, or finally we require Windows PowerShell 2.0. These are the prerequisites required to install SQL Server 2012. So before you want to get the support files, how can we get or how can we download Microsoft SQL Server 2012? So I have given as on the screen, I have given the URL over here, https colon www.microsoft.com slash en hyphen in slash download slash details dot aspx and the id 290 This is the, this, this URL will download Microsoft SQL Server 2012 required supporting files. Now, I will show you step by step how to install Microsoft SQL Server 2012. Okay, I'm having a few installation steps over here. Let me go through the installation steps one by one. As a step one, first we need to download Microsoft SQL Server 2012. By Typing the below URL in the browser, you can find it out. You know, it will redirect to the Microsoft SQL Server 2012 supporting files. Please select the all the checkboxes, what are the required things are there, and then go ahead and download all the files. Download all the files on your local. Okay, don't forget that. As a step two, you want to redirect or you have to go to the root folder where you have downloaded your SQL Server 2012. And you will find an option and you will find a file called setup over there. Double click on setup file as a step two. Once you double click on that one, it will give you a pop up kind of thing or window kind of thing for these planning as a step three. In the planning that you are having hardware and software requirements, security document, online release notes, how to get SQL Server data tools, system configuration checker. Install upgrade advisor, online installation tab, whatnot, all the documents that you, what are the required things are there for the installation that you will find all the things are there in the step three as a planning. Once it has been completed, please select the option installation as I shown you as a step four over here. Once you have selected that, you will find you know four options over there in the right hand side as I shown on the screen. One is new, new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. Second option, new SQL Server failover cluster installation, add note to a SQL Server failover cluster, and finally upgrade from the SQL Server 2005, 2008, or 2008 or 2. So which one you have to select? If, you're, if, you, if you are not installed Microsoft SQL Server 2012 on your local, so obviously you have to select the first option, new SQL Server standalone installation. Once you have selected, please click on the next. As a step five, it will check out the step, setup support files, which are required to install all the setup support files in your local system, in your desktop. So it will check out all the supporting files, 
once it has been passed, you are ready to go ahead and click on OK. But once it has been, if there is any fails, the OK button is not enabled, you have to fix them and then you have to rerun once and then click on OK. At the step six, the product key. So the product key is validating the instances that you are going to create in the SQL Server 2012. So if you are using, uh, you know, free edition, then go ahead and select option specify a free edition. Or if you are already having the product key, please enter the product key and then click on next. Step seven, license terms. So we are having some licenses, license terms from the Microsoft related. So these are all the Microsoft uh, Microsoft software license terms and the Microsoft software license terms that we are both we are having. So if you agree, go through them once and then go ahead and select the option. I accept checkbox once. And if you want to get any updates kind of thing and future is well, you can select the option and then click on next. Step eight, install setup files. So it will check it out. What are the files that you required to install on your local? Okay, as you know, it will scan for the product updates, download for the setup files, extract setup files, and finally it will install setup files. These are all the features. It will check it out one by one and then it will be going ahead and then it will enable the install button. Okay, if if the enable button is not enabled, okay, you have to check out what are the things, what are the issues are there and then go ahead and click on install. So as a step nine also, it will check it out sometimes what are the required in setup support files required for the installation. If all the things have been paused, you can go ahead and click on next. Step 10, setup role. Okay, this is very, very important for us to select the SQL Server features that we are going to install on our local. The first feature is SQL Server feature installation. In this one that you're going to install database engine services, analysis services, reporting services, integration services, and some other features. But whereas if you're going to select the second option called SQL Server Power Pivot for the SharePoint that you're going to installing, you know, uh, Power installing Power Pivot for the SharePoint purpose. Okay, and you know, you are having the data access also for that one for the Power Pivot. If you're going to select the third option, the final option, it's nothing but you are going to installing the both uh, first and second features over there. So as of now that I'm going to select in my system to install only SQL Server future installation related to SSIS, SSRS, SSAS related features. Okay, and that's the reason I have selected that option. As a step 11, as I already give the future selection, right? In the step 10, I have given what are the features that I have to install, right? That is SQL Server feature installation. So what did that I'm going to selecting the analysis services, reporting services, reporting services over the SharePoint and whatnot, all the related, the features that I'm going to be selecting by using selecting all and then click on, on the next. Again, there's a, some of the installation rules that what we are having in the step 12. So it will check out the .NET framework, what are the frameworks required, and then is there any prior install instances are there or not, required instance or not, you, it will rerun once. It will run once. If it is failed, please go ahead and rerun once and then click on next. Step 13, this is very, very important while you are going to connecting the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Step 13 and nothing but instance configuration. So if you see, while you are going to installing, you will find default instance. If you want, you can go ahead and you, you can install with the default instance or named instance also you can go ahead. As a named instance, nothing but what is the name that you're going to give it or that it will create the instance over there and with the same instance ID it will be creating. So as, I, as I'm showing you on the screen, it's a dev one I have given or else I will give a Microsoft SQL Server 2012 related one. Whatever the name if you want, you can go ahead and inst give the name for your convenience. Okay, and then click on next. Step 14, disk space requirement. So this is a disk space. It will check it out how much space is required it is a, in the C drive or the D drive, E drive. Is it having the enough space to install Microsoft SQL Server? If it has been passed, go ahead and click on next. Step 15, server configuration. Server configuration is nothing but, you know, they are the services that we're having to run our 
uh, you know, SQL Server Management Studio. The services are SQL Server Agent, Database Engine, Analysis Services, for the reporting services, integrations, so all these things that we're having. Okay, these services has to run on the particular account name. And if you see on the second column, the account name. So these services will run on particular account, right? So on which account that I need to, if you want to go ahead and you can edify, edit it, go ahead and you can edit. But if you want to run manually, you can select the options whatever there are there and then you are going to install all the services over here. But before installing, you don't find all these services in your services.msc. Yeah, MSC. So if you're going for the services run command and then going for the if you see over here services dot MSC. Okay, so if you're going to installing before installation, you don't find all these things. Once you have installed, these files will be appear over there. Okay, and then I'm going to click on next. As a step 16, this is a database engine configuration. This is also very, very important. Uh, 13 and 16 step are very, very important to connect to database engine. Okay, so this is the database configuration. While you are going to connecting to the management studio, first thing is required data instance ID and then the authentication mode that you are using. If you see over here, there are two types of authentications where authentication modes that we are having. One is Windows authentication and the one is mixer mode. If you see mixed mode is nothing but SQL, SQL Server authentication along with Windows authentication. So what will happen if you want to connect, if you're selecting mixed mode, you can go ahead with the Windows authentication or else you can go for the SQL Server authentication. Okay, in the SQL Server authentication, you're required to give the username and the password. So SA is my username and the password, default username is SA and the enter Password is nothing but what are the password that you are going here in the sense what are the password that you are going to use it for the security purpose. Okay, and then you're going to add the current user. Why you are going to add the current user? It will specify the you know SQL Server administrator who are there for the administrator. That's simply. Okay, there are the no unrestricted access to the database engine you know, for the current user. Fine. At the step six, 17, we are going to configure for the analysis services. Okay, so there are again two modes. One is multi-dimensional and database mining mode. And the one is tabular mode. Okay, as of now that I'm going to select multi-dimensional data mining mode, and then I'm going to add the current user without any issues for the access for the analysis services. Okay, step 18, reporting services configuration. In the reporting services, configuration there are two native modes that we're having one is install and configure and install only so install and configuration if you see that i'm going to install as well as the configuring at the same time okay and then uh, simply if i'm going to select the install only option then i will go ahead and installing only option once the step 18 has been completed go to step 19 this is distributed reply controller which users that have been granted the permissions will give unlimited access to the distributed reply controller service. So I'm just adding my current username by clicking add current user and then click on next. As a step 20, this is a distributed reply client that is nothing but for the controller name, you are just giving the controller name and then you're going to click on next. Step 21. It's an error reporting. If you find any errors in while installing or while you are working with the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, if you want to report to them to the Microsoft Corporate Report Service Report Server, you're going to select that option or forget about that. Uncheck the checkbox and then click on next. As a step 22, it will check for the installation configuration rules. What are the prerequisites? All are there in the location or not? So which is there any process will be blocked while before running it or not, it will check it out. Once it has been successfully completed, we are going to click on next. As step 23, ready to install. So it will give you the brief summary about the installation, what edition that you're going to be installing, what are the prerequisites already installed and what to be what need to be installed right now and what are the general configuration. It will show you all on the screen in the summary while you are going to, in step 23, ready to install. Installation progress. So 
you as a step 24 you are not going to do anything it will just progress all the install all the features what we have been selected in the previous steps okay in the future selection okay in the future selection all the things will be installing over here step 25 once you know step 24 will take a little bit long time like half an hour more than half an hour to install all the things okay so once it has been successfully completed you will find the feature which and every feature and the status you will see on the screen just like you know every feature has been successfully installed or not and you can see all the if all the feature has been successfully completed it will shows everything as a succeed right so this is all about the things for the installation but how would we confirm the microsoft sql server management studio successfully completed in my system once the installation has been successfully completed, we'll find a folder kind of thing in the Windows programs. Now I'm going to go to programs and check it out in the all programs. Okay, go for the Microsoft SQL Server. See, SQL Server 2008, 2012 and Visual Studio 2010 has been installed. Now what are the things that have installed? Microsoft SQL Server 2012. You can find all the you know, download SQL Server compact things, import and export data. SQL Server Data Tools, SQL Server Management Studio, Analysis Configurations, Analysis Services, Configuration Tools, Data, all whatnot, it's Integration Services, Master Data Services, Performance Tools, all have been installed. And you can see SQL Server Management Studio also. Okay, so it will, once you have clicked on the Management Studio, it will open. In this session, we learned how to install Microsoft SQL Server 2012. Okay, in the next session, I will show you how to connect Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio by using Instance ID and the Windows Authentication Mode. As step 13 and 16 are very important, don't forget the Instance ID. I'm just giving as Microsoft, I have given as Microsoft SQL Server 2012, and I have given Windows Authentication Mode as step 16. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.